um, be very glad I, I'm, this is one of the few, I usually don't redo my videos, but just be very glad that I'm redoing this video because I said some really crazy stuff on the last one. Maybe I'll have to make like a bloopers reel at some point um, of all the stupid crap that I say or accidentally say and stuff in some of these videos. But you know, if I'm redoing the video, it means it was pretty bad. <laughs> so anyway, now we're going to talk about metabolic syndrome. Let me see if I can sound normal for this video. We're going to talk about metabolic syndrome, which is effectively, and I'm going to, well, no, I don't want to go yet because um, um, we're starting out with an activity. So we'll, we'll stay here. Um, but um, metabolic syndrome is not a disease process. It's effectively a if someone has metabolic syndrome, it tells you as the nurse that they're high risk for something like heart attack, stroke, diabetes. These are not people that necessarily have disease processes yet. Sometimes they do. Some of them have like high cholesterol. Some of them have high blood pressure, um, but they're really high risk for life or death complications or really serious chronic conditions that could lead them to death. So what metabolic syndrome is, is it's kind of a pre-screening, pre-warning uh, uh, like a syndrome that we use to classify people to help to better know like who's really high risk. So, so we can start modifying risk factors and help patients. So in order, um, I know we haven't gone over what the criteria is. I have a slide that has the criteria, but we're going to go through these four clients and see which one of these, which of these clients is going to be at risk or have metabolic syndrome. Um, and, um, to start out, because I know you don't know it yet, in order to be diagnosed with metabolic syndrome, you have to meet three criteria. Um, and there's a variety of criteria, but you have to have at least three of the criteria, which we'll go through. Um, and um, some of the criteria is lab. Some of the criteria is blood pressure. Some of the criteria is medications. Um, as some of the criteria, um, uh, what do you call it, might be uh, waist circumference or have to do with obesity. There's a variety of them. So um, this is definitely something like with this kind of data, I think best for your note card. Um, if you're, if you're at my school and allowed to use those um, because um, it's a lot of information, but you want to understand as a whole, like, what is it telling me about the patient? So if a patient has certain things like increased blood pressure, poor cholesterol, increased waist circumference, they're on meds for diabetes or pre-diabetes, showing signs of poor glucose control, um, things like that. They're going to be high risk for cardiac and other, um, uh, you know, very serious disease processes that could put them at risk for death. So we're trying to get at stuff ahead of time. So anyway, Let's do client one. So client one's a 47 year old male. Remember we're looking for three criteria. The age is not a criteria, even though it does affect sometimes the other data we look at. Um, and the gender doesn't necessarily affect the, uh, the it's not alone a, a factor for metabolic syndrome, but we do have to consider it. So the reason I have male and female here um, is because um, sometimes some of the numbers, it's like, it's this high for men or this high for women. Like, you know, like how men can have one, uh, two drinks a day, for cardiovascular drinks, women can only have one drink a day. Still angry about that, by the way. Um, but um, needless to say, moving on. Um, that's why I have the male female thing there. Age, of course, the older you get, the more likely you are to have metabolic syndrome, have these risk factors, but don't let that distract you from the bigger picture here. So this first client, 47 year old male, blood pressure is 135 over 78. So looking at that, the 135 is on the higher end of normal um, and could possibly be a, um, a, what do you call it, um, a factor or what we look at for metabolic syndrome, but by itself, it's only maybe one, then LDL cholesterol 140. So we have to think, let's see, do you remember your normal LDL? It is, let's see how much of a cardiac god, goddess, godlet, whatever you like to be, goblet. If you like to be a goblet, you could be a goblet. Um, you are, it is greater than 130. So yes, yeah, so um, this patient has two risk factors, but remember, in order to be diagnosed with metabolic syndrome, you need three. So a client one is not quite yet there. Client two, 56-year-old female, hemoglobin A1C of 7.9. Now, poor glucose control is a risk factor for metabolic syndrome, but we don't look at the hemoglobin A1C. I know you think we would, because I know it's the better measure, but we actually look at fasting glucose, not hemoglobin A1C for metabolic syndrome. 
So that is not actually a factor, even though poor glucose control is a factor for this. Um, the next thing is they're on a torvastatin. So let's see if we remember, what is a torvastatin for? So it's a statin, and a statin helps with, you said, cholesterol, you're right. So this patient is showing signs that they have poor cholesterol. They're on a medication for cholesterol. So for metabolic syndrome, we can look at a patient's cholesterol levels, or we can see that they are on uh, medication for um, cholesterol as well. Um, and so being on a medication for cholesterol can, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, is one of the factors that we look at for metabolic syndrome. And real quick, glowing, glowing back. Hmm, here I go again. I really hope I don't have to do this video a third time because I may just like quit and cry and give up on life. Um, but because I was pretty far in, I was like, I was like, I went past the slide. I'm like, just keep going. Um, but then I started like, like not slithering like a snake, but I couldn't say a word that started with an S and I tried it twice. And then I just started like laughing and crying sim simultaneously. And I just felt like it was time to quit just in case you're wondering for like historical context. But anyway, um, to back up a little bit, um, when it comes to metabolic syndrome, there are specific labs and specific criteria. And I actually want to back up and say maybe LDL cholesterol is not it. I think it only goes by HDL cholesterol too. We'll look. So the client one might only have one risk factor instead of two. Because the LDL cholesterol, even though it's high, it's not the cholesterol I think we look at for metabolic syndrome. Anyway, on to client two. Hemoglobin A1C, not a good sign, but not specifically what we look at for metabolic syndrome. Being on a torvastatin is something we look at for metabolic syndrome. So if they're on a cholesterol med, it gives them one point towards having metabolic syndrome. And this is not something where you want to gain points, by the way. And then they have a waist circumference of 32 inches. So, hmm. So um, with the waist circumference of 32 inches um, for females, we have to have less than 35 inches. For males, it's less than 40. And so um, for um, this particular person, their waist circumference is actually okay. So they only have, again, one risk factor. So now we have a 79-year-old uh, female. Her waist circumference is 40. So what did I just say? For females, it needs to be less than 35. And so if it's 40 inches, she's already at an increased risk. So that is one factor. She's taking metformin for prediabetes. So um, anyone who has certain fasting glucose, which we'll talk about soon, um, or is taking a medication for diabetes, prediabetes, um, they are going to also have a second, um, what do you call it, check or ding for metabolic syndrome. Um, then third uh, is the HDL cholesterol 45. So this is the one that we use for metabolic syndrome. So um, if you remember HDL cholesterol, um, it's, if it's greater than, we want it greater than 40 for men, greater than 50 for women. So she's at 45, which means she's below where we want her to be. So she has three risk factors for um, metabolic syndrome. She has a, uh, a extra large um, waist circumference. She's taking something for her um, diabetes or pre, or sorry, pre-diabetes. And she has poor HDL cholesterol. If you remember HDL cholesterol, that's your healthy cholesterol. We want that one high H in the HDL is we want it high or it's the healthy or happy cholesterol. We want more of it. Hers is not high enough. All right. Last but not least. So this is the first client three metabolic syndrome. Client four, 66 year old male, fasting glucose is 120. So I know what you're thinking here. You're like, this is okay because you need 126 to get diagnosed with diabetes. And I bet you're like, <laughs> I remember something. Um, and I'm really glad that you do. Please keep remembering things. But here's the thing with the fasting glucose, the thing you need to keep in mind is, is that for a patient looking for diabetes, it does take them to get to 126 to diagnose them. But when we're looking at metabolic syndrome, a fasting glucose greater than 100 is what we um, do to classify metabolic syndrome. So client four has one because they have a fasting glucose greater than hundred. Blood pressure. So for blood pressure, we just look at the systolic blood pressure and if it's greater than 135, then they are at risk. So we have now two risk factors. Last but not least, we have triglycerides. And this is another one. Hmm. I don't know why, for some reason I was thinking, is it just HDLs or is it LDLs? Now I'm just doubting myself. We'll have to look at the sheet and I'm sorry if I messed this up because I made this a couple of days ago and when I made it, I was thinking and really smart and stuff like that, but my, um, my smartness has evaded me. 
from. So I want to say it goes by HDLs and triglycerides for metabolic syndrome, but I could be lying. We'll see soon. I'll see. Maybe I'm just testing you guys too. Anyway, triglycerides, if you remember what's normal because you love cardiac like I do, where are we at? We want a triglyceride less than 150. So um, we're at 160. So we have high um, cholesterol. So um, fasting glucose is too high. Blood pressure is too high. Triglycerides are too high. So those are our three um, criteria. So the uh, patient or client three and client four, both are metabolic syndrome. So like I mentioned, these people are at higher risk for cardiovascular disease, stroke, and diabetes. Um, the things we look at, um, like I mentioned, were obesity, but we specifically, we don't look at BMI so much as we look at increased waist circumference. We look at hypertension, specifically the systolic blood pressure, um, hyperlipidemia. Like I said, I'm pretty sure it's HDLs and triglycerides, but we'll look on the next page to verify. And then elevated glucose levels, specifically the fasting blood glucose. So here's the criteria. So take a picture, take it, it's table 4511, um, put it in your, um, on your note card if you're allowed to do that. But again, um, and the one thing that this helps you is waist circumference and HDLs are both 40. But for HDLs, I want them happier. They're high cholesterol. I want them high. So I want, um, oh, I said less than. This should say greater than. Dang it. I, I'm always so close to getting a great video done. So please, Jesus. I did these backwards. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. I did it right. I did it right. Okay. No, no, no. All right. Got it. So these, because I'm sitting there, I'm not, we're, this is not saying what we want it to be. This is saying what would show that it's bad. So all right, I'm good. Okay. All right. I'm not going to have a mental breakdown. Just, just know I'm going through a very rough time emotionally on these videos. I may seem very happy, but um, uh, a feather could blow me over most days. So usually sometimes I might cry after these videos, but that's just between me and whatever higher power I believe in. <laughs> but um, I can, I love teaching and I find so much joy and I'm so happy when I'm teaching, but sometimes when I'm not, I'm just like, <laughs> anyway, I know you understand. Um, but anyway, so let me back up here and just say, I'm not crazy. I was testing you. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna stop before I start crying, really. Um, but um, metabolic syndrome, these are the qualifiers. So these are the things that if a patient has this, they're bad. We don't want these things. So if they have, for men, if their waist is greater than 40, or if their HDLs are less than 40, um, that's not good. So if you want to remember the 40 thing, if that helps you. Um, for women, their waist, we want it. Um, we do not want it greater than 35. For triglycerides, we do not want it greater than 150. Um, and then like I mentioned, the less than 40, less than 50 for HDL, systolic blood pressure. Well, I guess it's diastolic too. So I guess it is both. I thought it was just systolic. So, um, so systolic blood pressure greater than or equal to, so keep in mind, these are greater than or equal to now. I'm, I'm very, a big supporter of not doing exact numbers on the exam just to trick you. Cause I feel like that's BS. Um, but, um, just in case it's greater than or equal to for some of these. So systolic blood pressure greater than or equal to 130. I think I said 135 on the other slide. So make sure you notice this. It's 130, not 135. And then diastolic blood pressure greater than or equal to 85. So look at both of those. Then a fasting um, glucose greater than or equal to 100. And thank you for um, dealing with some of my mistakes. I always usually come back and correct myself. If I don't correct myself in the video, um, then I do it later. And I know that there's other very professional people out there that do this for a living. And please, they probably spend a lot more time. They have the time, the effort. This is their job. This is not like I have so much more in my life um, than making these videos. I do these to help y'all. So um, I forgive you. Forgive. Maybe I forgive me. Maybe I should say forgive me. Please forgive me. Let me say I can form a sentence. Please forgive me for not always having these perfectly together. But um, hopefully and bring it back together. If there's anything that's confusing though, or you're like, man, you talked yourself into a corner, maybe some of the older videos <laughs> will be a little bit more succinct, um, but hopefully these help you still. But anyway, back to metabolic syndrome. Um, so um, when it comes to metabolic syndrome, we want to always think about how we can manage risk factors. So uh, managing, uh, changing lifestyle things like diet and weight loss are going to be very helpful. Because again, we're, we're trying to get people with metabolic syndrome before 
they have like a very serious, very big problem. We want to get them early before they get diabetes, before they have, you know, severe hypertension, need a lot of meds, need a lot of treatments for these. So lifestyle modifications, um, if they have high, depending on what their risk factors are, we're going to modify those. So if their cholesterol is high, we're going to modify that, um, give them meds for that lifestyle changes for that. We don't want to just throw meds at them. We want to always think about lifestyle first, um, do things to decrease their blood pressure, control their blood glucose if they need it, things like metformin, pre-diabetic meds, um, and then encourage regular physical exercise, um, or, and, or not, or I shouldn't say, or, and, or stop smoking. Um, they probably need both regular movement and stop smoking real quick. I do want to back up. I think your textbook on this table, um, because, you know, my brain, it, it's kind of a, it's a jumping squirrel sometimes. I think it also says that the qualifiers, like I mentioned before, also is taking medications for cholesterol um, or um, taking medications for blood glucose. I don't know if it says anything about taking medications for blood pressure. I'd have to look, but um, double check your table here just to, to make sure you're updated. But again, I don't, we're not going to give you anything too tricky. Just think of people that are taking meds for things or that are, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, they have uh, numbers that are out of range for these particular parameters. And then of course, like I said, what we're going to do, we're going to modify all those risk factors, lifestyle changes first, diet, weight loss, get moving, um, stop smoking. Smoking is so bad for the blood vessels and exacerbates a lot of these things. And then um, doing things to help with cholesterol, blood pressure, blood glucose is going to be for the win. And then I'm going to do some scenarios in class. Anyway, I can't believe I survived this with about a quarter of my dignity, but I'm still here. Now it's time to go cry. See you later.